Hello, hello. We're going to be working on Lesson 41 today, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. Just a reminder that with these lessons, as we're going through them, we go through a lot of the questions that are found in your workbook, but not all of them. Uh, so please make sure you're taking the time to do all of those questions that you see there. Today, our big question is, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? First of all, we need to understand why it is that we need the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 tells us that the Lord saw that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth and that all the thoughts and plans they formed in their hearts were only evil every day. Paul writes in Romans 7 verse 18, Indeed, I know that good does not live in me, that is in my sinful flesh. The desire to do good is present with me, but I am not able to carry it out. You can pick out things from both of these passages to see pretty clearly that we are not able to do good. We're certainly not able to believe in Jesus on our own. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, you look and you see all the thoughts and plans they formed in their hearts were only evil every day. And Romans chapter 7, verse 18 says, I am not able to carry it out. What is it? We're talking about that desire to do good. Um, so on our own, we are not able to believe in Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse three tells us, therefore I am informing you that no one speaking by God's spirit says a curse be upon Jesus and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us to know and to confess that Jesus is Lord. The workbook asks you to evaluate this statement on the basis of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, in order to get to heaven, we have to accept Jesus into our hearts. When you look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, it says that, an unspiritual person does not accept the truths taught by God's spirit because they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually evaluated. The fact is, we are not able to accept Jesus. Faith is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 says, there is also another reason we give thanks to God unceasingly. Namely, when you received God's word, which you heard from us, you did not receive it as the word of men, but as the word of God, as it really is, which is now at work in you who believe. Yes, brothers, you became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus, because you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews. When you look at number six, it tells us God chose us to be saved through the sanctifying work of the spirit and faith. Sanctify means to set apart from the unbelieving world by bringing to faith. What did the spirit use to set us apart for faith? The gospel, the good news about Jesus. It's the preaching of that word that was used to do this. In front of you, you have this fascinating parable that Jesus told. Here it is. When one of those at the table with him heard these things, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus said to him, A certain man made a great banquet and invited many people. When it was time for the banquet, he sent out his servants to tell those who were invited, Come, because everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one told him, I bought a field and I need to go and see it. I ask you to excuse me. Another one said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. I ask you to excuse me. Still another said, I just got married and so I'm unable to attend. The servant arrived and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house was angry and said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in here the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant said, master, what you commanded has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and urge them to come in so that my house may be filled. Yet as I tell you that none of these men who were invited will taste my banquet. 
So in this parable, the man who prepared the banquet represents God. What is the banquet? It's heaven. It's God's heavenly kingdom. So why is the work of the Holy Spirit so important? It's important because those who reject God's invitation will never get to taste that banquet. They will never get to go to heaven. The Holy Spirit brings us to faith through God's word and baptism. Those are the means, God's word and baptism, which the Holy Spirit chooses to use to bring people to faith. Number 10 asks us to identify the three enemies that try to weaken our faith. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12 says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We're going to pick out the devil as the enemy that we see in those verses. First John 2 verse 15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The enemy that we're going to pick out here is the world. And finally, Ephesians 5 verse 17, For the sinful flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful flesh. In fact, these two continually oppose one another, so that you do not continue to do these things you want to do. We want to do good, but our sinful flesh works against that and is fighting against our new man or against our against our faith. So our sinful nature is that third enemy that we pick out from there. If you're following along in your workbook, you're going to skip all the way to number 13. Number 13 says, who alone is able to protect us? Rather, just as the one who called you is holy, so also be holy in everything you do. Just as the one who called you is holy. Who is that talking about? It's talking about God. God is the one that keeps us in the faith. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. What part does the Holy Spirit play in protecting us? He gives us the faith to believe. Therefore, I am informing you that no one speaking by God's Spirit says a curse be upon Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 tells us why God's word is so important to us. And that from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit works through God's word to make us wise for salvation, to keep us in faith. A trip to the upper room. He took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you. The sacred rite that's being described there. That brings us to our last main point for this lesson. The Holy Spirit keeps us in the true faith through God's word and Holy Communion.